Welcome to the Teach Joyfully podcast, where we talk about all things elementary teaching with the mom stuff thrown in. I'm Lisa Burns, a veteran teacher, teacher success coach, and mom of five, and I'll be your host. Thanks for joining me. Are you ever at a loss for words? Or maybe you're the one who says something and then regrets it later? Either way, it's not good. In the movie, You've Got Mail, Meg Ryan's character says, When people shock me or say mean things, I never know what to say. My mind is blank. I think of what I should have said later. Well, that's me. But then Tom Hanks' character says, Oh, I can always think of a zinger reply. I just regret it later. That would be my husband. We are polar opposites when it comes to this. I don't know which camp you're in, but let me tell you, it can be so hard to have the right words at the right time. We really don't want to be in either camp in our classrooms. We want to have just the right thing to say to diffuse hotheads, soothe the hurt, and advice for all. That's a tall order. And honestly, we're going to fail sometimes. Okay, a lot of the time. But we have to get up and try again every single day. So how do we figure out what to say in the right moments when we're trying to teach, manage the rest of the class, and so much more all at the same time? It all comes down to preparation and understanding the outcomes you're targeting. Let me start by saying, words have consequences. I once heard a youth pastor speak about an activity that he did with teenagers. He gave all the teenagers a paper plate and a small tube of toothpaste and a couple of toothpicks. Now, it seems kind of strange, but he asked them all to take the toothpaste and squeeze it out into the paper plate, all of it. Make sure all of it came out of the tube. And then, once everyone was done, he gave them the toothpicks and said, now I want you to put all that toothpaste back into the tube. And of course, they all laughed because the task was, in fact, impossible. Did they try? Sure. And it was quite funny, but it was impossible. Well, he explained that that's exactly the way our words are. You can't take them back. Once they're out there, they're out there. Words are powerful, and we can't take them back. So we have to be so careful with what we say. We have the power for good or evil with our words in our classrooms. We have the power to build students up or tear them down. And it is such a terrifying and wonderful thing at the same time. As the teacher, we're the leader of our classrooms. Our words are powerful, and they set the stage for the tone for the day, week, and even the entire year. We need to have a plan or a vision for how we want to sound in various situations. All of these set the tone for everything else that happens. Our words can inspire students to work harder, to try more, to dig deeper, And they can certainly cause our students to shut down and to quit trying as well. So here's an example of a teacher using their words with power and great intention. When my middle son was in third grade, he was a little lazy and he hated writing. Now I'm sure you've met students just like him. He was a good kid, but these were things he just didn't care for. So he did the bare minimum. Well, one day he came home from school and he said to me, Mom, my teacher wants me to stretch myself. She believes in me. She thinks that I can do it. So I'm going to do a little extra writing tonight. Well, it turns out that this teacher was a master with words. Her encouraging, inspiring words got my lazy son to not only work harder, but to do it in a subject that he absolutely hated. He tried hard things all year, willingly. This teacher's ability to encourage and inspire her students and make her the teacher that everyone wants, both students and parents. To this day, her students consistently make more than a year's growth. In fact, my son that year made two years growth in every subject. As teachers, our words have power. They can encourage our students to treat each other with kindness and love and respect. And they can encourage our students to be spiteful with each other as well. And it can be so easy for a chance word to have the wrong effect. We're going to fail. It's okay. But we can fix it as long as overall we get it right. So 
So where do we begin with this daunting task? Well, I usually tell teachers to start with the trouble spots. What do you need to address in order to head in the right direction? You might need to evaluate for a day or two, take some notes for a couple of days to get some specifics. I often use a checklist to help with this, then I'm not missing anything important. Sometimes it helps to record ourselves for an hour or even an entire day in the classroom. It will give you a feel for the kinds of things that you're already saying all the time and the effect that they're having. It's hard to step outside of ourselves and hear ourselves, and having a recording can help us do that. If recording is not an option, take some notes on conversations that have happened throughout the day. What kinds of interactions have you had with your students? What kinds of interactions do they have with each other? What kinds of words are being said a lot in your classroom? Those are important. Just jot them down at the very least. This will give you a good idea of what you need to address in order to head in the right direction. You'll need to know times of day that problems tend to occur, specific situations or problems that your class is having, How often do you get your class up and moving? How much time do they sit and work? Do you have students with learning or special needs? All of these things weigh in on the words that you'll use. Think about the outcomes that you want. What are you hoping to accomplish with your words? Maybe your students are going through a season of being kind of mean to each other or just very critical with each other. Write it down and think about when that's happening. Now spend a day and really focus on that and think about what kinds of things are happening. Are there triggers? Are there things you're saying that have triggered this? How are you speaking to your students? Once you've done that, then you can start to craft words that you're going to say to diffuse those situations and change the tide. We want to get out of the habit of acting in the heat of the moment. Now, honestly, there are times when you simply have to act because it's urgent that's just fine. But if we have a plan for most of the time, then when those urgent times come up, we'll have better words to say in those moments. It's easy to think that we're accomplishing something specific with our words, when in fact we're actually accomplishing something completely different. For example, students shouting out is an age-old problem. When you have students shouting out, how often have you told students, no, we don't shout out, please don't shout out, or any other version of that? Well, it goes on and on. The reality is it doesn't actually accomplish anything. But if we change our words to say something like, I can't hear students who are shouting out. Let me see who I can hear. Those words change everything. To help you change your words and craft your words more carefully, I created the Choose Your Words Cheat Sheet. The goal is to readjust our words so that they're more effective. I'll have it linked in the show notes. Something else we need to remember is this. Follow through builds trust. Do what you said you'd do. When we set rules and consequences for students in our classroom, one of the things that we need to do is make sure that we're being very consistent with that. If we're not, then our students cannot trust our words. What we say doesn't really matter. And we're not following through, so they don't actually have to listen to that. Because the reality is, we're not consistently enforcing it. If we do what we said we'll do every single time, then students can can rely on our words and they know that our words are true. We have to build that trust. And if we break that trust then it's hard for students to trust anything else that we say, whether we tell them they're doing a great job or not. They don't know if they can believe it. Planning our words is empowering. It gives you the opportunity to craft what you're going to say long before those tense situations come up, and then you always have the right thing to say. So imagine for a minute that I'm reading with a student. They've just finished, and I want to reinforce the good strategy they used and help them fix the poor one. I might say, wow, great job reading. I'm so proud of you. The problem with that is, one, it's very vague, and two, now the student is relying on me for praise. There's nothing intrinsic about that. Instead, I want to do this. Wow, you really worked hard on reading that. I noticed you were listening to yourself read. 
When you said the wrong word here, as you read along, it didn't make any sense. So you went back and you found your mistake by rereading it and you fixed it all on your own. Good readers do that. You should be proud of yourself. And I can go on to point out something that they struggled with and say something like, well, let's work on a strategy together so that you can be practicing that. This is very specific language. It's very helpful language. And I'm reinforcing several things, hard work, listening to themselves, and that good readers have certain things that they do. And in order to be a good reader, these are things they would need to do. And that this student is in fact a good reader because they're using good reader strategies. I've reinforced three things all at once without ever specifically saying that. This is something students can hear and believe. If I just say, oh, you're so wonderful, that's great and all, but students don't always believe that. They need specifics. Something else that I do when I'm teaching is I have a very specific phrase I use in classroom management situations. I call it a power phrase. I teach this to teachers when I work with them. A power phrase changes everything. Truly, it's a game changer. It's simply a phrase that you use anytime students fail to meet expectations. It can be as simple as, oh, darn, that really was an unfortunate choice. That's it. All you're doing is you're just saying that that's an unfortunate choice and you're pointing out that something wasn't right. And you can go further than that and say, we'll talk about that in just a minute. This buys you some time so you can get the class busy and then you can really deal with that student one-on-one. -on -one. It keeps you from acting out in the heat of the moment. That is when we're most often going to make mistakes with our words. This gives you a chance to weigh your words, think about how you want to respond to this student, and then you can move forward. Other ways you can speak to students can be things like, whoops, let's try that again, or Help me out here. Let's focus. We're almost through this, guys. We can get it done. Simple phrases that you can use that work for you and your personality and will help your students stay focused, get the work done, treat each other with kindness. There's all kinds of phrases that you use throughout the day. If you have some of those prepared and you have practiced them, they will come out naturally and easily and you won't have to spend so much time trying to think of the right words and you'll be less likely to say the wrong ones or at least ones that you'll regret. I know it sounds like a lot to have these kinds of things prepared, but knowing what you're going to say and how you're going to say it really does free you up to be able to do what you really want to do, which is teach. All kinds of situations are going to pop up and you're not always going to have words prepared, but if you can have words prepared for the things that typically happen in your classroom, that will make a world of difference. There are several books I love on this topic of words. Choice Words and Taming the Tongue are two of them. I'll put them in the show notes for you. So just a quick recap, our words matter. We need to know what our intentions are with our words. And we need to have a plan for speaking with intention. If we know what we're trying to accomplish with our words, we're more likely to accomplish those things. But if we're always acting in the moment, we're never accomplishing what we think we're going to accomplish. We might accidentally do it on occasion, but we're not getting everything done the way that we want to get it done. We have to practice that and create habits for ourselves. So that's it, my teacher friends. We are out of time and I'm out of breath. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you liked today's episode, I'd love it if you go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and leave a review. And while you're there, you can hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss an episode. Also, you can continue the conversation with me in my Facebook group, the Teach Joyfully community, where elementary teachers can connect, get help and encouragement for all kinds of education topics. You can find the show notes and links to all the resources mentioned in today's episode on my website at www.hopeineducation.com forward slash podcast. Remember, a happy teacher is a good teacher. Until next time, teach joyfully and take care of you.